Africa, where life began. Today, we will tell you a famous story from Sudan, the story of the magic water hole. <laughs> That was a stage play from Sudan performed as part of World Refugee Day in Brisbane. The festival brought together refugees from all cultural backgrounds and highlighted the importance of music and sport to the integration of refugee communities into Australian society. Along with music from many cultures, the festival also hosted a volleyball and soccer competition. Mandy Cox coaches a women's volleyball team and she believed sports provided a way for the refugee community to break down social and cultural barriers which helped them to integrate into Australian society. I've been coaching like about three or four different groups and they have nothing else you know to do except the sport. It's a one way of um, escaping from uh, a lot of issues that they have, whether it's like a family issues or you know cross-cultural problems, whatever. So this is one way of uniting all the different you know ethnicities to come together, and they love it, they enjoy it. I found with my girls that a lot of them don't have even the social skills that they need because being raised in a um, refugee camp or you know or a poverty world, whatever poverty country, that you know they find it really hard to socialize with others. There's not much trust. When they come here, they bond with other girls. And I've seen girls, uh, the first time they came to the volleyball training and trying to unite in a team, that they're very reluctant to talk to each other. And uh, like, oh, well, she's like, for example, we had conflict of different um, uh, religions um, that they didn't want to sort of interact with each other. But once they got into it, it was not like, you're a Christian, I'm a Muslim. It was like, we're part of the same team and, you know, we want to go on, so. Jahad Hussain is captain of the Rohingya men's volleyball team which formed only a few days before the competition. He said sport was important to keep the refugee community connected and maintain support networks for families facing a culture very different from their own. When they come to Australia particularly, and mostly they want to play something, they want to do something, and this is a very good uh, thing for us really to come, to come together. It's also uh, not only playing sport but also you know like a confidence level raising because it's been you know, imagine 18 years in the, in the camp. Lifeline social inclusion team leader Brian Pacopas said he had organized many programs based around music and its ability to break down social barriers. He said music brings together people not only between refugees and Australian society but amongst the separate cultures and refugee community as well. He said music prompted self-expression which helped refugees talk about their experience living in poverty and war. We, we looked at the other, other aspects of, of music, the coming together of people, uh, the, um, the sharing of experiences, the opportunity to relate to one another in a kind of non-intimidating way. How has Lifeline used music to help the refugee community? We invited people to speak about uh, what it was like uh, when they realised they could no longer stay in the country that they'd been brought up in, had to leave and take their kids for their own safety. What was that like? I noticed there were um, people from an Ethiopian background standing next to those with Eritrean background. Uh, now, enemies back there, but here they were standing together and singing. It was a, an amazing kind of experience for us. Kay Thomas is a hip-hop artist and refugee from Africa. He said he used music to talk about the problems he faced back in his homeland and the many camps he lived in as a child. Background in um, war zone, you know, like war zone experience and I came from the bottom you know, so a lot of stuff that happened wasn't right. So I was actually, uh, I came here as a refugee. But yeah, I happened to make it here. And I'm, you know, I'm following my dreams to actually expose the life that I lived. 
in the past, which wasn't actually uh, a normal life as anyone out there. Mr. Prokopis said refugees of all ages face a massive challenge in society and recalled an incident involving an eight-year-old girl at the time when the coalition forces first invaded Baghdad. Uh, the children in the playground and said, I'm not going to play with you anymore uh, because your country people are shooting at our country people. And so here, this was in Brisbane, eight-year-old girl. It was an example, a further example to us of how something that happens in a faraway location infiltrates and, and um, trickles down and, and has a direct impact here. So we went out there and uh, said to all the children in the school, maybe it would be good if we could um, get together and um, talk about all of this and, and, and put our thoughts to music. So we gathered those thoughts and, um, and shaped them into a song which was called A Wish of Peace. Within the group who were recording was not only this eight-year-old girl from Iraq, but those who said they wouldn't play with her anymore. What does sport and music mean to the refugee community living in Australia? It just represents so much for people who have very little else and there's hope uh, this could lead to something.